Hello, and welcome to our online sermon. Our passage today is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind suddenly died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Amen. It's summertime, not that you would perhaps realise given the uh, British weather over these past few weeks. But summer is well known for summer holidays. It's a time when we look out our waterproofs, get an ice cream and then head to the beach. Then we all fall out as a family and head back home early. The best holiday I ever had was when I was posted to Cyprus in May 2020. Of course, this was the height of lockdown. Now, you might be thinking, why? Would the best holiday of my life be when I was quarantined for two weeks, unable to go anywhere, unable to do anything and unable to enjoy life? But that was just the point. This was one of the first and few times in many years when I was not on call, when no one could demand my attention and where I quite literally could not do any work. And so to fill the time I sat in the sunshine, reading books, praying, just spending some time, it was quite simply the best holiday I've ever been on. Jesus was an exceptionally busy man. He was always, always in demand. When people knew where he was, they would gather around him. They would listen to him. They would bring people to be healed by him. They would bask in his presence. In our passage, just before our passage, there so many people had come to see Jesus that he ended up having to feed them because the evening was drawing near. And so he fed 5,000 of them with five loaves and two fishes. Now, this must have been social overload. Imagine the sound of 5,000 people munching on bread and fish. Imagine the smell, more to the point. After this, after this, Jesus sent his disciples away. There was more work to be done. Verse 22 tells us that Jesus immediately sent his disciples away. There was a sense of urgency here. The disciples didn't saunter and take their time. Jesus wanted them to get on the boat and to go. So why was Jesus so quick to send his disciples away? Jesus wanted to spend time with his father in quietness and in prayer, where the noise of bread munching and the smell of the fish was absent. After reading that, I began to think to myself, how often have I been desperate to send those around me away so that I can spend some alone time in prayer? 
Normally I'm quite happy to be busy and to spend time doing the practical work of the Lord. Surely these things are far more important than sitting in quiet contemplation. There is work to be done. But there was a real sense of urgency in Jesus to carve out and dedicate some alone time with his father. Verse 23 emphasises this. It talks about Jesus being by himself, being alone. The world in which we live makes it very hard to be by ourselves or to be alone. The other day I went for a walk to clear my head, but very quickly into the journey I took out my phone and began to catch up on some work. It's so hard to take time to be alone. And yet there was a real urgency from Jesus to spend that time alone with his Father. Perhaps a lesson for each of us to carve out the time to be with God in prayer. As Jesus is praying in peace, his disciples were experiencing something quite different. The disciples' boat is being battered by the waves. Let's not forget that this happened at night, just before dawn. The disciples were on the water in the dark, being buffeted by the power of the waves. That was already enough to make them feel nervous. And then out of the darkness, this figure emerges from the waves. No wonder they were petrified. This wasn't at lunchtime on a calm day. This was the darkest of nights in a foaming sea. And what was Jesus' response to their understandable fear? Do not be afraid. That was the message that the angels brought to Mary while she was going to become a mother. That was the message that the shepherds heard when they were watching their flocks by night. That was the message that Jesus used to, when he met his friends for the first time after being raised to life. Do not be afraid. And the wind died down. In the presence of Jesus, the storms of life have no power. Jesus spent time in quiet prayer so that he would be able to calm the storm. He had calmed the storm, comforted his disciples, and all because he took the time to rest in prayer with his Father. And the message for us is the same. When Peter had his eyes upon Jesus, he could walk on the water. But when he focused on the waves beneath his feet, he began to sink. The same is true for us. If we spend the time with Jesus, then we will learn to look at his face and trust in his care. But if we spend the time busying ourselves with the things of this world, then when trouble strikes, our focus will be distracted and we will begin to sink. Jesus knew the, the real importance and value of balancing his life and his work so that he could be best prepared for the things that would lie ahead. For many of us, summer is a time of rest and refreshment. So whatever you are doing and wherever you are, my prayer is that you will find some alone time with your Heavenly Father. That you may be refreshed, restored and ready for whatever lies ahead. So let me finish with some words from one of my favourite hymns. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen.